Hello guys, welcome back to a review. Well, I say review, here's an inbox review of Historic Plastic Models, a weird, well not weird, but a company I've never heard of before I'm afraid. Sorry, show, starring, showing the Petsyliakov, I spelled that right, don't I? Petsyliakov, yeah, P E 2 in 148th scale. Yes, this is going to be a big bird, as they say. So, not Sesame Street Big Bird, Big Bird's an aircraft. Why did I say that? I do not know. Anyway, I've never heard of historic plastic models until now, recently. So, I'm just reading what it says on the box. Uh, here you go. Um, complete injection model can contain inscribed cray plastic, clear canopy, photo etch parts, detailed decals for six versions of Soviet, Czechoslovak and Yugoslav Air Forces, and a collective collectible instruction booklet. Paint school not, not included. Suggest for experienced modelers. Not suitable for children under three years old. Model for display purposes only. Photo extra prototype model. See in store for terms of the dish conditions. So there you go. So, uh, if you're wondering, the kit number is 48-006. Okay, so apparently this is series 205 to 359. I do know what that means. It must be the make of the, the PE2, I guess. Uh, so as you can tell, I got this from Cosford for £10. That was all I got this from. This was on the table sale, and uh, pretty much this was a review that uh, Ivan from Northern Scale Modelers wanted to see. Uh, of course, we had a quick look at it whilst he was at the show, because I quickly showed it him while I was walking around looking for some more stuff. And he said it looked very good compared to the Zavesta kit. So, kind of, this is comparing because I know he has that kit. Whereas I have this kit. So I think the Sylvester one has the actual detail for the engines, whereas uh, mine doesn't, I think. I've had a quick look in the box, all the parts are out of bags and whatever. Um, that was already like that. So yeah, we'll just go have a quick look at this. Uh said on the bottom here, you can see some brief history and what the adjunct model looks like. So we open the box. As you can tell, everything's just frame straight out in there. So it's full of plastic and as you can tell the fuselage halves are very good and there's some nice detail on those wings. Hmm. Very nice some decals there. Very nice. Right, as for yourself, let's have a look at instructions. So obviously I'm just gonna read this upside down. Well you're gonna see well but you're gonna read upside down for this part, but I'm gonna turn around and then read upside down. So of course we got some uh history of the actual aircraft. Uh Right, okay. Of course we've got some detail of what the actual aircraft had and that lot. So to start off we go to some part call-outs. All the parts show us a piece on the sprues and which parts, whichever. Uh, we've got tail wheel, engine bays. As you can tell, there's actually a fair amount of detail with this kit. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven. Eight, I had to think, I had to think of myself. Eight grey plastic pieces, one clear sprue, one photo etch, and one film. And of course, one deco sheet, and a partridge and a pear tree. So there we go. Right, so start off, you see we have all the parts together. Now, one thing I do want to point out, guys, um, there's two parts of instructions to this kit, which is actually sounds a bit ridiculous, but at the same time, very constructive. So, in this part, we have obviously all the pieces going together, what goes where and whatever. Whereas further down the line, in this section, it tells you what colours you have to paint where for side wall details, the inside. So they're all numbered, uh, whatever they want. The only problem is uh, they give the basic colours out, like the metal, leather, dark grey, dark green, silver, black, grey, blue, and linen. The trouble is, it doesn't. They not it well. It doesn't give you any like reference to like um, what's the bad words companies of model paints. Pretty much like Tamiya, Humbrol, uh, Revel, even you know Mr. Color. Anything. It doesn't give you any of those numbers. It just tells you the basic colors. So that's going to be kind of the hard part. 
But if you have the power of the internet, it will help you. But if you don't, you may struggle. Unless you know your aircraft. Well, the Russian aircraft in particular in this scenario. Like I know a few people. Oh, you just have a sort of few there. Apart from that, we'll just go crack on to how we are. So actually, you got the instrument panels, the gun sights going on there. you got some more control surfaces there. Oh, excuse me, guys. Sorry. Okay, so now you've got the... Uh, I don't know if it's the gunners or the co-pilot seats sat there. And of course, there's actually um, photo etch parts in this, so you do have your seat belts and buckles or whatever. Next to the pilot's components, so you have the rudder pedals going there, the oak stick, and the armor-plated seat going on the back there. And what do we have here? Are the bulkheads. I think this is the actual rear gunner's position with the actual gun, of course. And then you have the undercarriage leg for the tail at the bottom there. Okay, so that all fits into one side there. And as you can tell, the gun sits through there, I guess. Did they have the gun through five of those? Yes, they did, actually. Of course, so it all goes into side walls there, so that's hunky dory. Then we go to the fuselage sides where the... Oh, actually, hold a second. I think... All right, that panel there, that's not where the gun... This is the rear gunner where he sits for the bottom gunner. Just sat something like that. I wouldn't like to sit there, but... Hey okay. ho. Of course, you've got your glass pieces going in there. That's where your guns sit. Whatever. Now, of course, then the two fuselage sides get together. That tells you, like, what's, how, how it's supposed to all fit in. Very much so. Moving on, we've got the wings here. So we've got the, I think they're the air intake grills going there. Along with the dive brakes fitting in there. Of course, this was a dive bomber or a level bomber, whichever the two. To the wings there, so it looks like pretty detailed. Next up, you've got your landing legs. You've got two to make there. Then you've got your, your armaments, your bombs and whatever. Then you've got your covers, the engine covers going to there. And the pins for the actual uh, spinners and the props, whatever. Exhaust, I don't know whether they're uh, filled out or drilled. You'll have to see in a minute. Then, of course, the bottom of the uh, wings of the, of the belly there go on there. You've got your tail and your stabiliser there for your elevators. Should sit around like that. And then, finally, all the wheels go into there. Top wings and that fitting on. Followed by the actual engines and the gear base. And then this is where you move on to your ornaments and your last little details. So obviously on here, you got your obviously your underbelly where everything would sit. You've actually got oh wow, actually hold on a second. You've actually got a ladder there or the cockpit where they climb into there. That is actually pretty darn useful. And that's and actually you got your your guns and that going there, all your ornaments, and including your doors for your wheelbase and the glass pieces. I think that's a really nice detail point that you actually can have the hatch open to allow the cockpit access. That's really clever. And then of course your last little details around the cockpit area. I think you can see that anyway. Around the cockpit area and your spinners and your props and that's all going into place there and that is really it guys so as i said before all this parts just show you what clothes need to paint and what clothes for the interior you have to do by okay so now let's move on to the markings so you get so far you get two yugoslav ones they're pe2b-32 Czechoslovak air force okay that's 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 one and you have another one here. P oh, wait a minute. Oh, sorry, they're the exact same aircraft, just on different sides. So, so you do get a fair amount of decals schemes. You get one, two, three, four, five. You get five decals options for this kit. So they are kit. That's a weird accent. Okay, so this is probably one I would like to do. It's a nice scheme. Uh, Petty Yakov, Lieutenant Cole. V.I. Roskov, oh, commander of 12 GV PAV of the Baltic Fleet, summer 1944. So there we are, that's that, and it looks a very nice camouflage scheme because you've got your dog egg blue underneath there. Oh, why am I yawning so much? I'm not even, I don't feel tired and yet I'm yawning. It's probably because it's somehow out of 
talkative I've ever done all day probably. Do excuse me guys. So anyway, this, so this is the box art one anyway. So actually you've got your duck egg blue underneath and then you've got your green and brown camera schemes across the top there. Pretty nice and the white spinners and your nose hearts is that there. Or if you prefer your winter camouflage, this is the one to go for. This is P2 of the Baltic Fleet, so, oh, autumn 1944. Why is it autumn painted winter camouflage? I do not know. Obviously, it's got some green underneath there, and it's been dry, well, dry bushed, dry bushed, airbrushed over the top with white. So, that is a scheme if you're interested in doing your winter camouflage there. Very nice, actually. Wow. Anyway, you've got another Russian one. Uh, this is PE2, Lieutenant Connant, oh, Lieutenant. Call HSUI IE Cross Kronov. Wow, these Russian words are really weird. A 40DA Black Sea Fleet 1943. So, of course, this is just a standard green and ducky blue scheme underneath. And finally, you've got your PE2 of the 4th, bo the 4th Bomber Division, the 41st Bomber Regiment. Uh, so, Somber Yugoslavia 1970. Oh, that's a bit late. 1947. So this is a pre-war. What? No, pre-war. After post-war. Bloody hell. And of course, you've got your other kits that you get underneath there. I do like this finished version, and including that Heinkel 100 there. They look really nice. Hmm. So, if you're seeing these, this might be worth picking up. Right, so onto the plastic then. Well, onto the plastic, I mean actual schemes today. They still see. Oh, there's no. Okay, guys, okay, these are not resealable bags. So it looks like we're going to have to do it the hard way, actually. Careful not to cut those decals. There you go, straight down there. Opens that up. Okay. Okay, so your decals. Oh, wow, we really? wow. Okay. Uh, printed by Prop O Grantium 2000. Wow. Okay, so these decals are actually pretty thick. You can actually see the actual lining. Wow. Oh. Um. Right. Okay. So the faint the deck. The decal, the paper is very matte, but the actual decals are very glossy. So I don't know what to make of them. They should conform to the model pretty darn good. But I'll let you decide. So probably Sylvester have one on your pan there for the decals. Right, so the actual uh, clear pieces, they are not bad, guys. They are clear, as you can see, straight through there. Very clear. And, hmm, they're very nicely detailed as well. Of course, I think I might get some masking sets for this, I'm not too sure. Oh, but it does look a very greenhouse canopy straight in there. Not too much clear pieces, but there you are. And finally, we have our photo etch. Right, so there's a fair amount of detail on, on this photo etch. I mean, look at the grill plates for a start off. Oh wait, hold a second, no, sorry, that's not the grill plate, that is the actual um, hatch door, wow. Of course you've got your radio components there, your seat harnesses. Oh wait, hold a second, these are the dive brakes, wow. Photo edge dive brakes, sorry, I've never seen this kit proper close up yet, so this is the first time me viewing it properly. Wow, wait, that's really nice. So I'll just leave that a second, and last one leads to the carrier film. Decals are, well, not decals, film is okay, I suppose, if you want to add some detail. Um, it's entirely up to you how you have put it. Just putting all these in the bags out the way. Oh, come on. In there, of course, last but not least, don't forget your decals. Keep them out of harm's way because you obviously you'll need them. Okay, so that's that one done. Uh, plastic, right. First one, the fuselage halves. Now, I don't know if you can see very clearly, guys, but the sides are actually not bad. 
The exterior is nice, but there's no rivet detail. There's just panel lines, pretty much. I don't know whether I had rivets on the, on the outside. I don't know. And the inside is a different story. You have a few injected pinholes there. So I might have to use some filler from the inside there of the cockpit. There is a tiny, tiny amount of flash, but that can soon get sorted out, no problem. So it doesn't look too bad, guys, actually. Yeah. Did you see on camera, you can see that clearly or not? Mm, no, I don't think so. I don't really see an actual light there or not. But not bad, actually, very nice. Right, so next piece we have the actual intakes. Uh, again, there's a little bit of flash where the uh, the exhausts are, but it got some nice detail now. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. The actual air vents on the side here, I don't think they're air vents, I don't know, but uh, they're nicely done. Um, I don't really want to risk drilling them out, but I reckon that will look okay as I say, and also you've got some nice uh, hatches there where your bolts will go and hold and latch everything all together to get to the engine, so looks really nice but there's no engine detail, so well, there we are. Uh, last is the top and under wings, now I'm going to have to say guys, I think this is nice because you do actually get some rivet detail around these oil hatches and fuel hatches or whatever you want to call them, so I think they're in for a nice winner here. Hmm. And of course you've got your ailerons there. They're all nicely ribbed and fabric coated as well. I'm not sure we can see in the light there. No, I'm not too sure. So I'm just passing this uh, across the light here. So hopefully you can see that detail across there. But if not, then I do apologise. But this is a pretty nice kit. So HP, HIPM, so Historic Plastic Models. Copyrighted. So, hmm, yeah, I am very interested in this kit. Very nice. Of course, then the other pieces you've got your belly for where everything all sits together for your landing gear legs and your ornaments, and your Bombay doors as well. You've got your stabilizers there, or well, one half of them anyway. And what well, stabilizers are here? These are the Elons. Elevator, sorry, again all modelled up now. Again, fabric detail is actually pretty nice, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. I think you can see in that light there. Let me just see if you can see or not in that fabric. There we are. So you can see in the light there, all the fabric detail across those ailerons. Oh, it just, uh, my, sc my screen is focusing on something. Hmm. Very nice. Okay, uh, yeah, other piece here is your top piece of your aileron. Again, nice detail there. Very nice detail. I know that whole thing. No, it doesn't have autofocus camera, doesn't it, I'm afraid. Uh, right, so what have we got piece got here? We've got some armory, armories. <laughs> Stuttered in a bit. Bulkheads and whatever. But same again, fabric coated detail is nice. Right, so moving on to the actual uh, parts now. So let's check. Right, so we've got to start off with these small pieces. So you've got tons, and I mean, why I mean tons, of tiny little pieces that make up this cockpit. Wow, my God. Of course, so now this piece obviously has your control stick, your antenna, your boxes for your radios, your bulkheads your doors, whatever, your seats. Most of the things that you find in the cockpit are located on here. There's small but bulky items including the tail wheel here which does have a sink mark in it. Ugh, great. So that's that. That's that piece done. And now of course I'm, gonna, I'm only going to show one of these pieces because there's another one of this so they're identical. Uh, right, so what do we have on here? We have landing gear legs armaments prop, spinners, nose cones and of course the actual guns. So actually the guns aren't bad on this kit, very nicely detailed there's just a, it's a tiny little bit flashy and I think this could do actually a pretty much of a wash really from us guys uh, it's just a bit of just 
as you do residue on a few things where the mould release is but really that's nice the wheels are two separate halves for uh, and of course you've got your pad different parts and whatever so that really that so that's one and then of course your piece set so let me just count one two three four five six seven eight pieces of plastic going straight on to your aircraft which is as i think absolutely brilliant so just put those in the box before they get destroyed or whatever and we can carry on well carry on that is the end of the review guys so wowee that is a brilliant kit so if you're watching ivan i hope you've enjoyed this review mate because ten well, personally i've really enjoyed it as well i don't think i'm gonna build it just yet but it looks so good you're just so tempted to do so but of course we must keep everything at bay for a start off until you're really in the mood so that guys, hope you enjoyed this review, hope you've learnt something from it and compare it to the Sylvester one. So with that, happy modelling, take care and I shall see you on the next video. Cheers and goodbye for now.